Chapter One, The Staring at the Wall Club. I stare at the wall. It's as wide as my cubicle and stretches up to the ceiling. A white blank space full of nothing. Mrs. Ewings says it's supposed to help me think about what I've done, the effect it has on the class, the effect it has on me. But staring at the wall doesn't feel like it helps me. It feels like punishment. All I did was ask Mr. Fields if he was wearing a wig. My class laughed, but he didn't think it was funny. What did him wearing a wig have to do with geography? Nothing, I said. Yes, nothing, Felix, so get on with your work. But I couldn't concentrate. Jake, my best friend, was sitting next to me laughing, and that made me worse. Sir, do you like crumpets? I asked. I don't know why it was crumpets. It could have been anything. Last week, it was beetles, orange peel, fishing nets, but this morning, it was the word crumpet that randomly jumped into my head and out of my mouth. What? Mr. Fields looked as confused as the kids in my class. Do you like crumpets? I don't. They're full of holes like they've been eaten by worms. That's when Mr. Fields snapped. That's when he said, Felix, out. So that's how I got to talk to Mrs. Ewings. That's how I ended up in here in the staring at the wall club again. It's actually called the isolation room, but we call it the staring at the wall club because that's what we do, stare at the wall. It's my second time this week, the ninth time this month. It's not because I don't do anything really bad. It's just that I can't concentrate or keep still. Apparently it's called ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which my mum and dad say is a complicated way of saying I've got ants in my pants. All I know is that I can't help it, but it does mean I get sent to stare at the wall a lot. But not as often as James King in year nine. He tells me he gets sent here every day. He's sitting the other side of the partition wall right now, tapping his foot against his chair leg. And there are four other kids here, two boys from year eight, two girls from year nine. We don't talk to each other, but sometimes we smile or nod like we're members of a secret club. But most of the time, we sit in our cubicles and stare at the white wall, thinking about the things we've done, except all I can think of is going home with Jake to fight the cavalry. Tap, 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 tap. James, I think we've had enough of that. Tap, 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 tap. James? Mrs. Ewings looks over the top of her computer. Can you stop it? But miss, I've been here for ages. And whose fault is that? Mine, James King sighs. Tap, tap, tap. I stare at the wall. Tap, tap, tap. Hey, you. James King whispers like we're in prison. I ignore him. He's always in here because he's been fighting or has sworn at a teacher. I'm only in here because of crumpets. I try to concentrate, but I can't stop getting carried away by my imagination or the tiniest thing that grabs my attention like cars going by outside or a spider crawling down the wall along the floor. I slide my shoe across the carpet tile. The spider crawls up the toe of my shoe, over my laces. Oi, what? I jump out of my thoughts as James King pokes his head round the edge of the partition. I don't want to talk to him and get in more trouble, but Jake says the worst thing you can do is ignore James King because he'll think you're scared of him. What? I whisper back. Did you get sent to Mr. McLugish? James King talks like he's my friend, but he never says my name. No, I whisper back. I did, he boasts. Says he's going to expel me if I do it again. What did you do? Nothing much, just couldn't sit still. He pulls a face like that's no big deal, then says, you're the kid with a weird granddad, right? You say this every time we're in here. I sigh. I know I do. That's because he is weird. You don't know him. Don't have to, James King says. But picking you up every day in a pink car is weird. He's just my granddad, I say. James, move along away from Felix. Get him to move. No, says Mrs. Ewings. I asked you. James King huffs, then picks up his bag and moves. It's only a few seconds before he starts tapping again. 
I stare at the wall and try to block him out. Some kids do homework in here, some read books. Jake said he fell asleep once, but I just stare at the wall to make time go quicker, to forget where I am. If I stare long enough, I see colours and shapes and they merge together and it's like I'm watching a film. My house, Jake's house, my granddad's house, around the edge of a grass square. And in the middle of the square is my and Jake's tree. In the winter, we're soldiers crawling across the grass on our bellies with guns, talking on a two-way radio. And when the coast is clear, we fix our bayonets and run through the snow. In the summer, we load cannons and fire them at the horizon where the enemy, enemy are camped. Sometimes I get grazed by a bullet. Sometimes they hit me full on, right between my ribs. I can still feel the stabbing pain in my heart. And if I lift up my shirt, I can run my fingers over the ridge in my skin where the scab fell off. Me and Jake take everyone on. It doesn't matter who they are or what country they come from. It's any soldier who dares to come near us and threaten our tree. I imagine I'm there now and I can see them advancing through my binoculars. There's a sniper on top of Mrs. Flower's roof, sweeping across the square, over the parked cars at the front doors of our houses. He keeps sweeping, sweeping, until he suddenly stops dead in line with our tree. I need to stop him. I need to. I pick up my rifle and rest the butt against my shoulder. Snap. The sniper locks right onto me and I'm locked onto him. We're two eyes at the opposite end of a giant telescope. Don't shoot, he whispers. Don't shoot, I whisper back. Click. He's pulled the trigger. Click. I've pulled mine. I duck as a bullet whizzes past my ear. Ha, got you. The sniper's head explodes like a giant tomato. Felix, Felix, someone taps me on the shoulder. I jump and turn around. Mrs Ewings is looking at me weird. Uh, yes, miss, I was just... My brain scrambles back to this world. Mrs Ewings taps the table. Felix, she says, your granddad is here. 